Senator McAllister, I will have to share the call around. Um, Senator Davey, are you ready to go? I am. Um, thank you very much. Thank you for appearing today. Um, I want to bring you back to the similar line of questioning that I've had with you for the last uh, few estimates um, with the climate risk um, evaluation and um, your vulnerability assessments that yes. you're undertaking. Um, so the climate vulnerability assessments were being developed last year. You're rolling them out this year. Uh, how many have you undertaken so far? So we or haven't undertaken we... any yet. Mm -hmm. um, because this is new ground for us, uh, we're doing a pilot which will occur over this calendar year. Um, we're working with a small group of large banks who are sort of part of the pilot exercise. Uh, the status of that exercise at present in simple terms is um, we're working with the, uh, the, the entities that are part of the pilot uh, to see whether the sorts of information that we think would be useful to have would be the sorts of information that they are able to generate and that they also think would be useful to have to help them understand um, the risks that are in their business and the opportunities that are within their business. So um, I'd say it's still in, the simplest answer to your question is it's still in development phase. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working, as I said, with the institutions, the banks that are going to be part of the pilot to help make sure that the scenarios that we're talking about and the translation of scenarios to risk exposures um, can be done in a, in a consistent oh, way. You, you said you're working with the big... The um, Why are they selected the bank to yeah. participate in the pilot? Oh, we chose the largest ones. Okay. Um, it's not, no more scientific than, than that. Um, uh, th th it's not just the big four, but it's, it's large banks is, is the... Um, so do you think that the guidelines you've already produced and, and your announcements about moving down this pathway is already having an impact on financial institutions and how they invest and um, on Australian industries? Uh, possibly. Um, but but we're, doing, we're working in an environment where there are lots of forces um, that are raising these issues with institutions. Um, there is obviously changes to government policy here and around the world happening. Uh, institutional investors are demanding much more information on um, exposures. The industry itself has a number of industry-led initiatives designed to um, ensure that um, to the extent that people are making investment decisions, they're well-founded investment decisions. And, and that is at the heart of the, um, the whole objective of the exercise, is not to, uh, not to say something should or shouldn't happen, but to ask people and ensure that financial institutions, to the extent they're investing, whether it's a bank that's lending or a super fund that's investing or an insurer that's insuring, they are making their decisions on the best available information. And that's a, that's a sort of simple premise to it all. So uh, I, I, we have a, a live case study this year that was reported in, in February. Um, we, we've had a couple of the big banks announce their climate and financial risk um, policies as mm -hmm. banks. Um, uh, both, I think, the NAB and the ANZ have come out publicly and said that they are going to step away from investing in businesses uh, enga engaged in uh, thermal coal. And this year we've seen the real-time example of that with the ANZ um, withdrawing finance from the Port of Newcastle, mm. which in and of itself as a business is a highly uh, emissions efficient business, in fact, very low emissions business. But the fact that they are a throughput for thermal coal, ANZ has, has um, stepped away from, from funding their diversification plan, their plan to make their business less reliant on coal. So how can it be financially or fiscally responsible for institutions under the um, imprimatur of APRA to actually be, you know, actively withdrawing funding, making it impossible 
for businesses to diversify or to step away or to uh, you know, remodel, restructure their business into the future that might address our climate concerns? So I think it's a, it's a very legitimate concern that you have. Um, but just to be clear, there's no imprimatur from APRA to tell people to where to invest or where not to invest. What we have said is um, it is important that people understand this risk. Uh, and investors and shareholders are demanding that financial institutions show how they are responding to the risk. It may be, and you would hope that it is, that with better data and, f and more sophisticated analysis, um, financial institutions are actually able to better identify these businesses are actually quite viable businesses. These businesses have a plan and therefore they're viable not just today but into the future and, but you and, and the banks could continue. But gets played with this topic. It's, Sorry? Not, it's not about the financial viability. The broader risk that you're assessing isn't the financial risk, it's the political risk to the institution and organisation. Well, for, I can only speak to what we're doing and we're concerned about the financial implications of these risks to the institutions we regulate. But and, you're basing that on, on not the, the business model of the business, mm. but on the potential right. for shareholder <coughs> activism or the potential for... Um... No, I'm just saying um, banks are operating and insurers and superannuation funds are operating in a world where um, governments around the world are changing policies that will have an impact on asset values. Investors and shareholders are demanding more transparency about the nature of the risks that are within our bank uh, our portfolios. And this, you know, there are questions of degree, but there are certainly legal views around here that directors in fulfilling their um, director duties under the Corporations Act need to at least understand those risks. Um, and so, we are doing two things this year. We're doing the climate vulnerability assessment, uh, which is, again, to encourage the, uh, the financial sector, and particularly the banks who are part of the pilot exercise, to gather together better data, to better equip them to understand what are the true risks there. And there will be risks and there will be opportunities. Some of the risks may be higher than expected, but some may well be lower in the, in the case you, you talked about. Uh, and you know, at least some of the banks are seeing there are plenty of new opportunities emerging as well, and data will help, uh, help understand that. And then the second thing we're doing, um, which we've talked about previously, is putting out a practice guide designed to help uh, financial institutions understand how to meet their existing obligations uh, in relation to climate-related financial risks. It's not a new, set of a new set of requirements, it's not a new standard. But it simply says, when it comes to climate, um, how do we uh, meet our existing risk management obligations? It's a new area. The industry has asked us for guidance to set, be clear about what APRA might expect to see, and we're trying to respond to that. So they're the, they're the two things we're doing. And, and I come back to the point, ultimately, it's about helping uh, financial institutions make better informed decisions and, and better manage the risks. So I mean, I'm, I'm not alone in my concerns. There's, there's um, you know, the Australian Centre for Corporate Responsibility has identified, um, they've criticised Australian superannuation funds for withdrawing high emitting companies without prior public warning and proper climate risk tools and exhaustive consultation. They've also identified, particularly in areas like the Hunter Valley, where um, supply chain options available are quite limited, so the opportunity to, to divest and to, to broaden the expanse. The Australian Institute of Company Directors, Port of Newcastle Chair, um, has admitted that demand, world demand for coal is beyond our control, but to service that, we need a company right. like the Port of Newcastle. So, um, and the Minerals Council of Australia CEO, Tanya Constable, um, has also identified that the negative impact of denying a strong and productive sector, being the resources sector, access to competitive finance could have a profound, could be profound for the Australian economy as well as for many regional communities. And my concern is that it is in the regions 
where the results of this um, ideological sort of policy framework will happen. So I think my final question is, with the, what, what is the end goal of the climate vulnerability assessment? Is this, is this an effort to work with banks, but then are these assessments going to be publicly reportable and then become a tool for shareholder activists to start taking action against our major financial institutions? Are we going to be sending more of our businesses offshore seeking finance because they can't get it onshore because people are too scared to find fund businesses that may be low emission businesses in and of themselves, but because they're part of a supply chain of an industry that has been labelled evil, um, they, they are locked out. So all legitimate concerns and, and my response to that is we're trying to get away from things where there's just things labelled evil or labelled bad actually to have fact-based analysis. And if the analysis is these, these um, particular customers or particular industries actually have a plan to adjust if they're low emission, and, and fine, that's good. We get, we get better decisions made about uh, where to allocate capital in the community. What is happening, um, just in a broader context though, is this is, this is not just uh, an APRA um, uh, siloed effort. I mean, similar exercises are being in, undertaken um, in many other jurisdictions around the world. Uh, will they be public? I think we haven't really decided yet what the end product will be that comes from this. I'm wary given it's a pilot exercise and, and um, we're all learning as we go along. Uh, you know, just how robust the results will be, we'll have to see, I think. Uh, so, as you're developing the pilot, you're working... Last one. Last one. You're working with the banks. Are you also working with the industries that could be... So, are you working with the resources sector, agricultural industries, to find out what... how they can be part of the solution? Uh, I'm not sure. I'd have to take on notice what engagement we've had with beyond the financial sector. Um, but I think, we're, as I said, we're learning here, so we're happy to have input. But I'll take on notice what other engagement we've I'd appreciate we've that. Thank you. OK, Thanks. Senator McKenzie, just a couple of questions. And one from Senator MacDonald. Then we're going to <laughs> Senator Roberts for five minutes. Well, and yes, Waters, all a result of a non-quota system, I might it. say, these three <laughs> fabulous senators. We need to be... Um, done, just we, on the sorry, back... Just, sorry, Senator McKenzie, we need to be finish this by 11.45. All righty. So we need to move through quickly. OK, um, I'll take that as a comment. Um, that was definitely th a comment. Thank you. Um, just on the back of Senator Davies, very excellent questioning on behalf of our resources sector, which underpins our economy and many small businesses through the supply chain. You, you, you mentioned taking those vulnerability assessments pilots for the resource industry, or is it more broadly? No, it's, it's um, and to... Is it, uh, sorry, yeah. you go. No, it's to climate-related financial risks more broadly, which right. may be, it may be in the, the housing sector, or yeah. it may be okay. ac across the bank portfolio. So I guess um, one of the concerns that's been raised, and I, I did raise this yesterday uh, with Treasury, um, is that it isn't just about climate change risk, um, but also things like um, animal welfare risk. This is a, a red, green, orange assessment of our financial sector in this country around animal welfare standards. Now, we are one of the best managers of animal welfare in the world. And yet, if I look down here, this column, great agribusiness lenders like Rabobank, Suncorp, uh, ANZ, um, Bank of Queensland, etc., etc., are all uh, assessed by Animals Australia uh, as hyper-negative, big red bad people, because they finance farming, because they choose to support agricultural businesses. Um, I draw your attention to a Beef Central article of April last year, um, which actually talks about the National Australia Banks um, turning their back on agriculture, not because of the climate risk, but because of, as Senator Davey briefly touched on, um, shareholder activists. These are not financial decisions. 
and they don't go to the financial viability of the businesses nor the industry as a whole. There is a deep concern out there in community. I know you deal at a macro level, but there is a deep concern at a local economy and the contribution, as you mentioned, to our national economy of agriculture and mining. And I, I, you know, it's great to feel great about our assessments and how we're working with the world, but at the end of the day, it's going to be small businesses that pay. I'm not sure I got the question, to well, be honest. Well, the question but, is, but are you assessing... Uh, OK, are you doing the climate change assessment? We are not doing Vulnerability work, assessment? We are not doing work on, on, on animal, animal welfare. welfare? Um, on animal uh, welfare? No. So the live export industry won't be wrapped up in this? No, so the, the climate vulnerability assessment is, is um, in a sense, is working from a top down. It's got some, you know... Uh, I know there's a lot of debate in this area about what the scenarios and the projections are, but it's got some fairly conventional, I'll call that word, scenarios about uh, the way the climate could evolve uh, and working from a top down as to what that means for different geographies, different industries, etc. It's not going to the level of issues of animal welfare or, or other things. Uh, okay, I'll put the rest on notice because I know Senator Macdonald. Thank you, Senator questions. McKenzie. Senator